yeah, these are, let, let's, let's be real. These are very rare moments nowadays where we got to see some of the very best from every side of New York, Jersey, even CT coming out. This is where we got to see the very best come out and showcase what they're all about. And I mean, this is two of them right here, right? Yeah. This is a grand finals-esque type set, but this is winners round four we're seeing right now. Jen versus PK Chris, two phenomenal players. Yeah, and both players, like, going back and forth, looking for... But early on, it's been Jen, right, finding and maintaining the mm -hmm. stage control. Well, really, PK Chris hasn't been able to find a way in or let anything get started. And Jen, despite how good Palu's by aerial game is, we're seeing Jen play very grounded in his movement, really only jumping and catching right. and, and PK Chris on reaction and just not letting him get started. And honestly, Ness's floatiness is really hurting him early on in this matchup. So the thing about this matchup for Ness is it's really hard to get in on a character like Palu, mm -hmm. but then you also got to keep in mind, you're not just playing on stage, you're playing the off stage game as well, because Absolutely. as much as Palatina is getting you off stage, now the question becomes, how am I going to recover? My recovery is so exploitable, especially to a character like Palu, who can easily two frame, even counter me off stage at any point in time. But you know, the way, oh. Well, I mean, oh, I, mean, I, was, I was just gonna say yeah. the way that, uh, PK Chris has been uh, changing up and mixing that recovery has been paying off so far, and now you see it, uh, a whole stock lead to work around. Yeah, and I mean, right, this is, we've got Ness, Palu, PS2, all the red and green, right? And that's a little bit of a Christmas gift that PK mm -hmm. Chris will take every day of the week. He, Jen, despite a really fast start, PK Chris has brought it all the way back, and that SD letting the pressure get to him. But Chris, again, just, or, just not able to hold that stage against Jen at all getting pushed right back to the corner immediately. Jen now using the jab, that jab, uh, mm -hmm. something that's been a recent meta development for Palu. But again, like, PK Chris just has not been able to get out of the corner and back to stage mm. at all. Yeah, unfortunately right there, you saw the back air come out, but the disjoints of that nair of Palu's gonna come in clutch right there for Jen. I mean, doing a, I'm, both these players are playing very safely. None of them wanting to do that overcommitment, but finally, PK Chris finding a few hits here and there, but even when you find a few hits, all it takes is one Nair train for Palu to start bringing things back up in ad advantage state. Right now, the spacing from both these players, immaculate. But yeah. we need somebody to start hitting that. I was going to say, over and over, right? We just saw the, these PK fires or that Chris is throwing out haven't been connecting at all. Just doing such a good job playing around them, but getting caught with a trip into the jab log. Ash Man's not going to do it. But uh, now you have a corner situation, and if you're Chris, you have to capitalize. You haven't been able to do it at all, and not able to find it there. Again, seeding stage control, trying to play in the corner, but Jen's just not even letting him, him hold this platform. It's hard, because even when you have, oh. as the up tilt takes the stock, great usage right there, but even when you have most of the stage control, Palu is so good at building that wall, especially against a character that kind of struggles to get in. Yeah, you can use your PK fires and all your PK moves, but the reality is, if you mess up, if you know those moves have enough lag for Palatina to just start exploiting you and getting in your face right now, PK Chris has been doing a wonderful job just keeping him at the corner. But Jen finding his footing now, 102% can definitely seal the stock and even yeah. things back out with the down smash. Good call out. That was gorgeous, especially with how far in advance he charged it up, right? I, PK Chris had already burned his jump, so he didn't have the resources. Ness's recovery is so linear, there's not a whole lot you can do. No but jump. answering that stock getting taken by racking on a clean 40% there, completely unanswered. Or, or despite a really slow start, PK Chris is starting to find his footing. And Jen starting to miss some of these juggles that he was hitting so much earlier, not able to hold on to stage in the way he was earlier in the set. Oh, you overcommitted right there, going for the grab option. It didn't pay off for Jen. Now he's sitting at 92%, very high percent for Palutena, especially against a character like Ness, who's hit, who has a lot of strong attacks. Not going to get the two frame, but the ups. Air, not enough No, either. that was great DI from Jen to find his way out of that situation. The higher blast zone on PS2 coming into his benefit as well, but you cannot nair oh, Ness. No. It feels like that, and now you've given him a whole bunch of percent right back, not in kill range anymore. Jen's now all of a sudden and got some ground to make up back, though. not going to do it from center stage either. You have to capitalize on this corner situation if you're Jen because things are starting to get a little bit out of hand. The stalls from PK Chris have been so great. It's catching Jen slipping every single time. That's, that's one it. thing you have to do with Ness. The back throw will be enough, but that's one thing you have to do as a character like Ness. You know that this character struggles in some aspects. That recovery is not good, especially against a character like Palu, as I mentioned before. However, the stalling with PK Flash, um, yep. just knowing when to air dodge, 
knowing when to jump, knowing when to like angle that PK Thunder. Everything just kind of panned out for that offstage game to not even play a factor for Jen to even like get a good lead. He had leads here and there, but he didn't clutch him out uh, the way that he probably should have, like Palu is known to do. Yeah, no, exactly as you said. One of the things, though, I want to look for in this game number two is what these players' adaptation is like, right? Right? Jen got out to a very, very fast start. Mm -hmm. But Chris managed to dig deep, hold it back, make some adaptation, and take advantage of that early SD from Jen to find that first game. However, because he had to do so much adaptation early, he's going to have less tricks in his back, right, going into this game, too. So if Jen can force a game three out here, he might have a little bit more room, room to adapt. Yeah, no, for sure. And you also want to keep in mind, you have a counter to utilize. You have really good burst and range options in your disposal if your gen can definitely start gimping Ness, unless you're going to be the one getting gimped. We see PK and Chris right there had a chance to get edge guard, but not going to opt for anything. But the PSI magnet getting him out of that nair. Yeah, he's, he's really changed around. PK Chris in early in this game, too, is really changing around how he's been using oh, magnet. No. But that's the down smash again going to find the stock. Uh, Chris has not been able to get away from those and now getting immediately called out on his landing oh, no. into a nair air train up air juggle here. He can't get back down the stage. Gonna burn the air dodge as well. He has no resources. Oh my god, sent to the heavens, packing and with the, the taunt as well. Yeah. Coming out from Jen, real good showcase right there. Juggling with Palatina, not a hard thing to do, but being able to steal the stock without letting your opponent touch the ground, that is almost a mission impossible. Yeah, and he let he let Chris do that early up air again, right? To get mm -hmm. that extra aerial momentum, drift to the other platform like you've been doing, finally called him out on it. And then Ness has, to, has nothing except the air dodge, right? Yeah. And and once you burn that air dodge, uh, there's literally nothing of character as floaty as Ness can do to get away from this juggle. Jen's been so oh, no. good at covering these platforms. Orm's really taking away the option. PK Chris's ability to find safe places to land on stage and just hasn't, and has maintained his ability to hold on to stage mm -hmm. control that he had in game one it's just not he's not giving chris any of the openings that he had he's really cleaned up his play yeah. going into this next stock and yeah. into this what is currently looking like a game three. Oh no for sure and you really got to play with a lot of comfortability mm -hmm. and you're seeing that being displayed from jen like he's feeling himself he sees that everything is connecting left and right everything is just hitting the way that he he wanted them to do in games one look at the patience this time around despite missing that edge guard you've been seeing him swing and, so much with that down tilt and speaking of right that you know jen made such he found a lot more backers in yeah. that game he found a lot more grabs in that game, and really that was the difference. He didn't let Ness get in on him and start outboxing him with mm -hmm. those incredibly active hitboxes that Ness can throw out, the, the, the good frame data as well that he has on the ground. We saw uh, PK Chris make such good use of in game number two, and one of the benefits of Palo, right, being that invulnerable back air, I believe it comes out on frame six, it's yeah. allowing you to just get through, like really not care about those active hitboxes Ness is going to throw out to try and contest you in that corner. Yeah, it's really good to see, you know, like people abusing the good tools that their respective characters have. We're seeing that right now. Game two was a, just a great display of what you can do with Palu. If you know what you're doing, trying to go for a cross with that PK rocket, but good awareness from PK Chris just to hold back saying like, I'm not going to hit you. I know this already. Let me just at least maintain the stage control. Yeah, he was looking for a fastball there to mm -hmm. maybe try and find that Gak style clip, but when he recognized it wasn't there, very good patience. And now finding these PK fires, he didn't hit a single one in game two or really that many in game one, but Jen's gonna capitalize let, uh, saying, okay, you put yourself in the air, I'll take oh, no, this no hit and we're gonna either. get a juggle, but missing in, in great air dodge mix up from Chris as he got caught by it last time, but finally finding his way, he's still in the corner, but he has an opportunity and the missed grab from Jen. You can't whiff that, the only character with a better back throw than Palu at ledge is going to be Ness and mm -hmm. finding the stock, but Jen answering right back, and just like that, we're right back to an even game here. For sure. I mean, I mean, you're seeing, if you're playing in the air as PK Chris, that's a battle that you're putting yourself at risk at. You've been noticing Jen has been taking full control of the stage in the air game for the most part, but, I mean, these conversions from PK Chris, and like, he's tacking on damage pretty speaking easily. of that down tilt, one of the few tick grabs you have mm -hmm. in Ultimate, Right, finding that on shield is gonna allow a grab confirm, but not get able to get too much off. And now you're in the same situation, oh, burning no. the air dodge early. He, he's gonna have to jump here as a mix what? up, calling out the magnet with explosive flame. Dude, that's so incredibly risky. And it was so good because PK Chris even had the PSI magnet 
pulled out, but let go a bit too early. And now Jen optimizing the, the stage and now has the slight lead in terms of percentages. Has to be careful with these PK fires that we're noticing uh, PK Chris starting to use relentlessly. Up air will be enough. Yeah, and now Jen is one stock away from taking this 2-1. Jen did a beautiful job with that, finding a drag down air, 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 air. So PK Chris thought he was safe, pulled out his jump, tried to get the magnet cancel, and mm -hmm. Jen just ready for that air stall, right? Saying, okay, if you're gonna stop your momentum, I'll just wait and I'll just hit you with that up air, find the stock. And now, oh, Chris on his stock. Last stock of winner's side, Jen at kill percent. So Chris can definitely make this back. Ness capable of you know, racking on tons of damage, finding these kills, but so far just hasn't been able to find a way in on Jen in a hot minute. No, yeah, for sure. And you're noticing that Jen is playing the patient game now. Like, you have to come to me. I am not going to move a single muscle. That was, that was a pivot. The pivot walk into grab Jen is feeling himself. Oh, oh finally getting that two frame. We haven't seen that at all. Yep. And he. And the back air. Okay, yeah, 100%. Yeah. That's done. I was going to say, Palu is one of the best characters in the game at contesting Ness in that position. Mm -hmm. A lot of characters, right, are very afraid. Because if you get hit by that, you're going to die. Yeah. yeah, sometimes if you get hit by it, it also reduces the distance Ness travels. So sometimes that can still be an effective edge guard method. Mm -hmm. But the fact that Palu is an invulnerable back air means you can kind of just not care.